Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to take you through a homeschool day in the life. If you're new here, I have a nine and a half year old, a five and a half year old, and a two and a half year old. And the first thing I do to get my homeschool day going is I actually make lunches for my two oldest kids. And it might seem a little weird because obviously we homeschool, we're not going anywhere, so why do I still pack lunches? I found it makes it a lot easier with the flow of our day. If I pack a lunch, it's in the fridge, and then when they get done with their work, because they often finish at different times because they have different amounts of work to do, obviously between their ages, that they can just grab their lunch and go, I don't have to stop in the middle of the day, whatever I'm doing, whether I'm taking care of something in the house or taking care of my two and a half year old, they can just grab it and go. So I'm gonna turn you around here and show you what I made. So it is 7.30, my oldest has already had breakfast. We had protein pancakes. My two youngest are currently eating now, you might hear them. But this is the lunch for my five and a half year old. This is my lunch for my nine and a half year old. I have plenty of videos showing my kids lunches for the week, so I'll link them up above. Everything you see here will be gluten free because my youngest daughter has celiac disease. So they have snacky lunch today. There's only a little bit of difference between them. Cut pieces of sandwich cheese, salami, gluten free crackers, fruit they have homemade pickles in here cucumbers from our garden tomatoes from our garden and their treat is the white chocolate peppermint where she kisses nine and a half year old has everything the same except she prefers ham and so when they're ready they will just pop these out of the fridge and have lunch and it's one less thing i have to do it is now 8 22 and i'll just quickly tell you what i do in this hour we do not start homeschool till 10 a.m. and that's mainly because my two and a half year old that's when his nap starts and I have just found it it's much easier to do our bulk work while he's napping so what do we do between breakfast and 10 a.m. well I do a bunch of things I obviously made breakfast for everyone cleaned up the breakfast dishes I'm currently making some bread I do that probably every other day and make a loaf of bread. I'll link up above my video where I show how I make gluten-free, gluten dairy-free bread. I have taken care of my chore. And again, I have a video up explaining our chore system and everything like that. So my chore today was bathrooms. So I cleaned up the bathrooms. It was just a quick clean, um, garbages, changing towels, that sorts of thing, making sure um, there's hand soap in all the bathrooms. We have two and a half bathrooms. Tomorrow will be the actual like cleaning of sinks, cleaning of the toilets type thing. I find it's easier to break it into two days than try to do it all in one, especially in this time frame I have here. So after I collected all the towels, I put them in the washer. I do a load of laundry every day. I start it in the morning, so by the afternoon, it's ready for my kids to fold it and put away. That is one of their daily chores, which I will show you really quick here. So this hangs up. This hangs on our fridge. I've talked about this before. Our chore system with the kids. So obviously. They've done this. My youngest did the dishwasher this morning, and my oldest has brushed her hair and teeth. So they flip it over when they're done. Some jobs like feeding the dog and wiping the dining room table get done all week, but they have to finish everything by Friday. That is the rule. So all of those things have been done, and now it's almost 8.30. I'm going to actually sit down and have the breakfast I made at 7.30. I do take medicine in the morning. I have hypothyroidism, so I have to wait at least an hour after taking my medication to eat, which works out perfectly because I can get all those chores done and everything done that I need to in the morning. So when we start at 10, all we have to do is homeschool and the rest of the day is free for them after they're done. And I don't have a bunch of chores I have to do. So it creates a nice rhythm. I also like to point out, I have not touched my phone at all. That is something that I have found helps with productivity. I don't get distracted with emails and Facebook and messages and things like that. After I eat breakfast, I will quickly do a check of email and messages and things like that. But for this chunk of time, I use it in the best way I can, getting things done. The kids get their chores done. Everybody gets what they can do done. So when we start homeschool, homeschool is all we have. All right, it is 9 a.m. and usually what I will do is I will take my two and a half year old outside so he can play in our backyard and we have a play kitchen, mud kitchen, all that outside. And it gives the girls an opportunity to kind of play by themselves. They're doing like an elaborate Barbie thing right now and he tends to topple over everything. So this is their 
kind of playtime without him. And then he gets some energy out before his nap. I will also, as you can see here, check on my garden. I have cucumbers, tomatoes, pumpkins, lettuce growing. So I'll pick anything that needs to get picked and bring it in. As you can see, some of that stuff was in the kids' lunch today. <laughs> but we'll do that for about an hour and then he'll lay down for nap and we'll actually get the official learning part of homeschool done. It is 10.17. I just laid my youngest down for his nap, so hopefully he sleeps. And my girls cleaned up all their Barbie toys and everything, and they are ready to start. So I'm going to flip you around, show you what they're doing right now. And this is probably a good time to mention if this is your first time seeing one of my videos. I don't actually show my kids' faces in the videos. I don't share their names. So you won't actually be seeing much of them in the video at all. But it'll be a lot of me explaining things and showing you what we're doing. So this is where my oldest chooses to work, just our chair, and she's got her stuff out here. She just grabs it from this cabinet right here. She'll be doing some review in math, so she will not need me for that. She will be doing her multiplication and division facts, but she will not need me for that. And then she will be doing Thursdays for Sadler vocab again. If she has any questions, she'll come get me for that. But all this should be pretty much independent unless she has any questions and then I'm going to work with my five and a half year old while my oldest does this. So to give you a look at the cabinet in here, I've shown this in our I believe homeschool tour, room tour, but this is my nine and a half year old. This is their portfolios right here and this is my five and a half year old. This is the all about reading that's already sectioned off. And so I will just grab this whole thing and bring it to our dining room table because I find they work best in separate areas. So this is what my five and a half year old is doing. She will start with, this is not the actual book, I just use it to hold, picking out one of the phonics new writing sheets for core knowledge. And she will do that independently. So I'll put that over here for her to pick out what she wants to do. Then we will do a math lesson. Again, we are here. You can see my pre-planning video, how I go through and pick everything, what, we're, what activities we're going to do. I've already read through the lesson, so this is the activity we're going to do. She's going to be stringing some beads on some pipe cleaners, and we're going to make rows of 10 and count by 10s. So she will do that, and then she will do her fluency sheet from All About Reading. She did the lesson in this section yesterday, so she will do this. Probably, I would say this section and this section. I don't think she'll have the stamina to get this done, but we'll see. So she's getting started on her handwriting while my oldest has a question. So my youngest just finished her sheet. She had to fill out which one the picture matched for the word, so she did that. My oldest just finished her threes multiplication, so that's good. So she's gonna move on to her next thing. And my youngest, we're going to move on to math now. So we're gonna count by tens. Each of these groups is tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Which of these is 40? Beep, 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 beep. Okay, do this one. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Which one's 50? 50? 50's all the way down there. Same thing, we're going to count by tens here. Okay. And then we're going to circle the right one. 10, 20, 30. So which one of those is 30? Okay, do the other one. Very good. Good job correcting yourself. Maybe I did one to be this one. Okay, what about that one? Hmm. Hmm. This is easy. Alright, yeah, that is pretty easy. You're pretty good with tens. So she finished her lesson, so we're going to just put her bookmark there and we're just going to do the hands on activity. Okay? So I want you to take a pipe cleaner, whichever color you want, and I want you to put 10 beads on it. It can be the big beads, or it can be the little, little beads, okay? Can you do 10 on your pipe cleaner? So she is making her 10 beads here. 
And then my oldest had a question about time, so she came over and asked me about that. She's going to go back to finishing that while she finishes her beads. If this one's 10, this one's 10, and this one's 10, how many beads do we have? 10, 20, that'd be 20. 10, 20, 30. 30. And now you have necklaces and bracelets. <laughs> all right, so she finished her lesson in math. She finished her activity. So all we have left for her before lunch is she's going to read this section and this section. So we will actually go do this on the couch where it's more comfortable. She just finished up. She did read this section and this section. We will do this tomorrow and then a book for Friday. So she's going to clean up her mess here and get ready for lunch. And because I already made lunch, she'll just pull it out and be good to go. So I'm going to check over my oldest math real quick while she washes up and gets ready for lunch. It's 11.06. That gives an idea of how long we took to get everything done. My youngest daughter is currently making more bead necklaces, so when she's done, she will have lunch. All right, so I just finished correcting that because it was the second part of the year-end assessment. She only missed one out of all the questions, so I always write the date and her score here because I do keep this as part of her portfolio to show what she can do by herself and what she's learned. So that tells me that she understands what she's learned pretty well. So. Now while the oldest two stop for lunch, I will have a snack, because again, I ate about an hour later than them, so I'll have lunch later than them. And what I will do during this time is I took out my fresh bread, it is cooling on the counter right now. I will switch loads of laundry, and then by that time, one of them should be done and ready for their next part of the lesson. <laughs> All right, it's 11.30, so you can see here we're on Thursday. My daughter's done her math, she's done her vocab. So she has all about spelling zoo, which she'll do with me now that she's finished lunch. And then IEW, she just has corrections, or to do her final draft, make sure everything's there. And then we will do torchlight and science together. The only thing my youngest daughter has left is core knowledge, listening and learning, which we'll do after lunch as well. Dishes. Now let's look at this. Dish is. Is that one syllable or two? Ten. So what are we going to add? Tense. Dresses. Right, let's sound it out one by one. Duh, er, eh, s, it. Okay, so is dress is one or two syllables? Dress is. There you go. So that lesson literally took under five minutes, so she's going to move on to IEW now. All right, so IEW, all she has to do today is her. We are on day four and five, so she's going to use her checklist to make sure all of these things are in her paper here. She started doing some of it when she wrote, obviously, because some of it's underlined, but she needs to include her name, date, things like that. She will make sure that's all done, and then she will hand it in to me for corrections. And then tomorrow, she will do corrections on her paper after I've gone through it today. So that shouldn't take her too long to actually go through. All right, so my oldest has finished everything that she has to do for today. So what she's going to do is the math playground, just math games that she can do. And what's nice is you can see this is a touch screen computer. This is my husband's old laptop that he lets the kids use for school. So she's going to do that. I do ask that she do two typing lessons 
using um, a typing app, a free typing app. She's already done her two typing lessons for the week, so she will just pick out some math games while I work on core knowledge, grade one, listening and learning with my five and a half year old. All right, you can see how we utilize technology in here. This is my kid's Amazon Fire tablet, and this is my husband's old Samsung Galaxy that, again, he lets us use. You can tell my husband is a very techie person. So I have the teacher guides all loaded from Core Knowledge on here, so I can just look off here. It also has a pen, so you can make notes directly on the pages, which is really helpful, and of course, bookmark. And then I use this for the flipbook images. So when we're talking about stories, there's specific questions that we'll ask about the story, but right now we're doing Aesop's Fables, but it's really nice for her to be able to have something separate to look at. And since my oldest is using the other computer. So as you can see here, there's a lot. This is a review from the story we did the other day, but this is where the new lesson starts today. And you can see on her tablet, she's got the picture there. So I'll just read this along and we'll go through the questions. Sometimes we have enough to get through all two stories or lessons that day. Sometimes it's just one, so we'll see how far we get. So we just finished our lesson up. It is 12.06. So there's always an activity to go with after you go through all the questions and things like that. But one thing I really like about this is since we're doing all the Aesop's fables, the Usborne, Usborne, my first reading library, and I originally got this off Amazon, has a bunch of the Aesop's fables in it. So after we read some of the Aesop's fables, um, for example, we just read Ananasi and the like the beginning story of Ananasi the spider and the importance of it to the African tribe. We have the one of the stories, one of the tales, and it's nice because it's also um, an early reader, so we can use it as an early reader, or I could just read it, but I'll give you a quick look at the books that are included in there, but we've been doing that a lot where we'll just pull the Aesop fable that goes with our lesson and read it too. All right, so now we'll move on to Torchlight. So the first thing we'll be doing is memorizing our Shakespeare passage. Then we will do, finish up this book, Will's Words. Then we will read a story in this, a specific toy. And then we do our book of innovation, innovations today. So I believe they're making a board game for that. After all that, we'll do science. All right, so for this, we'll work on a passage. What I really like is it, I have it on our Ikea board here. We break down the passage, so we talk about how Shakespeare sometimes made up his own words or the words represented something different, so we give the context of what is it actually saying, and then we do a rhythm, and the book tells you how to do this, to memorize the passage, and of course the book tells you why the points of memorization with Shakespeare and how it helps. So we did this yesterday. We are working on the second part of the passage, which will be in here. So we'll go over the context of that passage and what it's actually saying. And then we will work on the trick to the rhythm of remembering it. And that will be what we practice today. No bank with a lot of tiny boats where octopus and nine violets go. Quite over a canopy with Luscious. Luscious, one fine, but sweet, less roses, and time. So we finished our Shakespeare practice. We're going to move on to Will's words. And all we do for this is, on this side, it talks a little bit about what's going on in the Shakespeare play, the theater specifically in this one, and then Shakespeare's words he used and what they mean and what play it came from or what song it or what passage. And it really helps kind of understand the plays a little bit but better understanding where the words came from and what they're actually meant to say. It is 12.33, we just finished Will's words. We're gonna do this and the two, and this is just telling, as you can see, amazing stories behind some great inventions. We were supposed to read the slinky today, but funny enough, last week for the research project we chose, the kids chose a slinky, so we're going to skip over that one and do the next one. And this is the story behind Monopoly. So we'll read that and move on to the Book of Innov Innovators? 
All right, so it's 12.44. We just finished the book, and we learned all about Monopoly, so now we're going to do my book of innovations. And for this week, the kids are going to be designing their own game, which goes really well with talking about Monopoly. And it has kind of the setup of how to do it, what kind of game do you want to make, what are the themes of your game, what is the goal of the game, what supplies will you need, and then you kind of sketch out an idea of what your game will look like. So I think this would be fun, and this is what we'll work on now. It is one o'clock, and the kids just finish developing their game. It's called Exploding Trees, and it's an interesting concept. It's where it's an outside game, a playground game is one of the things they decided, and you have to present, pretend a tree exploded nearby, and you have to reassemble the tree. So you, it's kind of like a scavenger hunt where you look for a stick, a rock, leaves, and you have to put like a tree back together, kind of design it like an art craft type idea. And if you manage to find something that grows on a tree, like a pine cone or an acorn, you get bonus points. So whoever finishes their tree first, and you get a bonus point if you have something that grows on the tree for ages three and up, obviously for safety reasons. And then they had a really cool idea that you could change it depending on the environment or the habitat. So if you lived in a beach, you'd have to design something that would be on a beach, perhaps like a palm tree. If you lived in the Arctic, what would you have to do for that? So different habitats could be different versions of the game. So that was their idea for a game. So we are gonna move on to science. So again, I have this in my prep and plan video, how I outline it. We're gonna start with a game. We're gonna read chapter six. Again, I have the tablet, the student reader loaded onto the kid's tablet. I have the teacher guide on my Samsung Galaxy. So we are going to do the activity, the game. It has a handout sheet that goes with it. We're gonna be learning about body control. We will do the activity in our sticker book that goes with how the body works. And then we'll label their giant outline. So we will start with a game, actually. So how we do the game is we are going to time ourselves to see how long it takes each of us to stack our tower, and then we're going to discuss why the times were different and how body control works and how things like with athletes, different things affect their performance. So let's start with our game. All right, so we just finished reading our reader for it about learning about body control. We talked about how different things can affect your ability to control your body. We did a sticker book about how our brain works and we learned specifically about the nervous system. Right now, the girls are working on their body outlines and adding the nervous system to their bodies. We've done skeletal, muscle. I think we've done a couple organs. So right now we're using the outline to draw our nervous system. And they do one in a different color so they know what each system is. So the nervous system has been added to our outlines. This, this one was done in orange. This one was done in green. So they are done with their work for today. So they are rolling up their papers, they're putting their supplies, books, everything away. Yeah. It is 1.25, as you can hear, my two and a half year old is awake, he just came downstairs, so perfect timing when that works out. He actually took a lot longer nap than usual today, so that was helpful. So they will have the remainder of their chores to do, they have to pick up their rooms, take care of any toys they have out around the house before they do their tablet and TV time. Again, they get a half an hour each for those. And then the only other thing we have left for homeschool is tonight at seven o'clock, we will do our read aloud. And I'll show you guys what that looks like as well. So at 1.25, I will have lunch now and I will make lunch for my two and a half year old. But pretty much the rest of the day is whatever they wanna do. We don't have any scheduled activities today. So I thought I'd show you what my youngest and I are eating for lunch. She's having just salami, mayonnaise, cheese, again, everything's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, some cut-up grapes, cucumber. If he wants ranch, I'll get a ranch, but he's usually fine. I'm just having leftovers, pasta salad, again, everything's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free. 
And most of the time I just have leftovers. So this is from yesterday. I made some homemade bread today. So that's going with me and in case you think I eat super healthy. You better believe I am having a pudding. This is a dairy-free, obviously gluten-free, as well uh, chocolate pudding from Kroger that I really like. I really enjoy ending homeschooling with rewarding myself with chocolate. So this will be my treat after I am done with lunch. All right, it's the official end of our homeschool day. We just finished our read aloud. We did the auto audiobook version of it, and I highly recommend it. We have three chapters left, and my kids got very upset when I turned the audiobook off, so it's a very good Shakespeare mystery. And we started the read aloud at around 7. We just finished at 7.30, and that would be our entire homeschool day. And I just want to say that today was a good day, and that sometimes they're not good days with homeschooling, that sometimes it's difficult, and there's frustration and struggles, and that's completely normal too. Today just happened to be a good day, but I think on social media a lot, it's often portrayed just the good parts, just the good days. To remember that when we're watching these things, we're often seeing a glimpse, but not the whole picture. <laughs> so, quick reminder on that. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If not, thank you for watching.